This video will show you how to solve for missing angles when you have parallel lines cut by a transversal. When you have parallel lines cut by a transversal, you'll see that you have eight different angles, or I should say it creates eight angles. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Notice that this is an acute angle and this is an obtuse angle. And you notice that they only give you one angle measure. That's 142. And they want you to solve for all the missing angles. So there's a couple of ways to do this. But the one trick is that you could circle the number that they give you, the degree that they give you, and then go across like this. It's called like a crisscross method. Circle 2. And then go across to 6. Circle 6. And then go across one more time to 7. Like in a crisscross. Coming from 2 to 142 to 6 to 7. And all of those angles that I just circled will be equal to 142 degrees. Angle 2 is 142 degrees. Angle 6 is 142 degrees. And angle 7 is 142 degrees. Well, how do you get the other angles then? Well, this right here is a straight line. And I hope you know that a straight line equals 180 degrees. So if there's 180 degrees in a straight line, just go over here, you do 180 minus whatever this angle was, the given angle, in this case it's 142, and you will get 38 degrees. That's the measure of angle 1. Since 1 and 4 are vertical angles, that's the measure of angle 4. Since 4 and 5 are alternate interior angles, that's the measure of angle 5. And finally, since 5 and 8 are vertical, that's the measure of angle 8. So you can tell that once you get all of these angles finished that each straight line has a hundred and is equal to 180 degrees when you add them together two and four equal 180 degrees one and three equal 180 degrees also um they will ask you for a different vocabulary you have vertical angles which are two and three right here vertical angles which are one and four vertical angles 5 and 8, vertical angles 6 and 7. They also ask alternate interior angles. Alternate interior, just let me erase this right here. Alternate interior angles are only angles that are inside. When I say inside, I mean interior, inside the parallel lines. And this kind of looks like, um, honestly, it looks like a sandwich to me. So, uh, and I'll just bear with me. I know, I'm not well. This is the bread. This is a piece of bread. And this is a piece of bread. This is the toothpick that goes within, inside the sandwich. And inside the sandwich, it's the meat and the cheese and everything like that. All of that, all of the angles in, inside, they're called interior angles. Alternate interior angles go across from each other on the inside. Alternate interior, like 142 and 6. 4 and 5. Alternate interior angles. They also ask you alternate exterior. So, if, that's, if these are the angles that are interior, 1, 2, 7, and 8 are exterior, outside the sandwich, or outside the parallel lines. It's not really a sandwich. So alternate means across from each other, so 1 and 8, alternate exterior angles. 2 and 7, alternate exterior angles. The last type of angle that they might ask you is 
corresponding. The best way I could explain what corresponding angles, this is the, the toughest one for people to remember usually, is that when you draw or when you deal with similar triangles and you have one big triangle and one small triangle, just like this, we sometimes circle the angle on the top and then ask, what's the angle that corresponds to this one? Well, it's the other angle on the top. They're in the same position. So this is the top. That's the top. And the bottom right corresponds with the bottom right. All right. So we know what corresponding is when we're talking about some of the triangles. Why is it so difficult for to identify corresponding angles in when you have parallel lines. Well, it's not that difficult. But the thing is, is that you're that you you have to think of the these parallel lines as like two um, two pairs of like vertical angle questions. So if I put the shade like this, you notice that that, that right here here the there are the vertical angles and this is the vertical these are the vertical angles and here one and two are supplementary and that's one part of it so that's the upper half on the bottom uh towards the bottom half on the bottom there's the lower half here's the upper half here's the lower half so if you think of it that way then you'll have no problem with corresponding angles because if I circle one and ask the angle that corresponds, ask what the angle that corresponds to that angle one is, um, you could say this number one is in the upper left-hand side of this of the figure. So upper left, and on the bottom, the upper left is five. So one and five correspond to each other. In the upper right-hand side. That's angle two. That corresponds to the upper right-hand side of the bottom half, number six. Two and six are corresponding angles. 142 is in the lower left-hand side. And angle seven is 142 also is in the lower left-hand side. And, of course, number four in the lower right matches up with the other, the lower half, in the lower right so corresponding in the same position well i hope this helped you out a little bit and i'll see you next time